This is the hen house I built last summer. Um, it is May 2nd, 2021 right now. <clears throat> I built this last like July, August, September, when it was of course the hottest months of the year. I use telephone poles as the main beam supports, and then most of the rest of the wood is culled wood, C-U-L-L, cull wood from Lowe's, and other places that get rid of the bent wood and things that are just kind of broken up. So the wood has quote unquote character to it. Uh, even the door came from a, like a Habitat for Humanity place that sold uh, resale items, and I cut into some of the panels there uh, to make them yeah, a little artistic, a little arts and craftsy. And the big stone I got out from some some land in a creek bottom as a porch. Uh, <clears throat> the whole thing is rimmed in this metal roofing. These are cut off pieces, so they're scrap. Uh, but they're extras from metal roofing projects that uh, one of the hardware stores around here had. And they're various lengths. Um, but they go underground almost a foot in most places so that when varmints try and dig under, they, they don't have too much success. The lap siding on the enclosed part of the house is made of fence panels from Lowe's. Not fence panels, fence pickets uh, that were broken or bent or discarded for some other reason. And they sell them for, you know, 10 cents on the dollar. So I would, I would grab all of those and I would make them, you know, an offer on them and, and try and get them down as low as I could. And uh, that's that's what I sided the entire place with. See around here, it's sided on the edge with it also and on the back. That's the enclosed part. That's where the nest boxes are. That's where the roost is. Uh, of course, that's where they sleep. And then out here is the run where they can go out and do their thing all day long and eat and drink and, and be merry. Uh, what I did buy new was the metal roofing itself at the top, but it wasn't very expensive. It's all post and frame construction, and then I built walls between the beams. You can see here I have a uplifting instead of downfalling door. Often uh, they fall down, which is how I had it designed in the first place. It tipped, it tipped downward instead of tipping upward, and then you can see the treads on the top of it. Uh, were meant to be something the chickens could walk on. But that presented a, a, a myriad of issues. Um, and so what I liked better was letting it fall like this. And I went ahead and put a counterweight on it and some pulleys so I can lift the counterweight and it drops the door. And I can set it right there. And then when it's time to open it back up, because, you know, that's a big change in the chicken's world right there. That, that doesn't bode well. Uh, I can pull it back down with the counterweight and sit it right there. So then it's opened back up, which is where it pretty much stays. <clears throat> and then in the run, there's a watering bucket right there with an outlet wired in above it. And there's there's an extra feed pan and a hanging feeder. And there's a door over here on the other side. This is another entrance. And I just built it out of uh, one before. So one by four pine and some gussets made of some extra extra plywood I had laying around. And then again, all this metal goes underground quite a ways. All the beams, the main uprights are made out of telephone poles. My power company is a rural power company co-op and they, uh, they let me purchase them from them really cheap and it's great stuff. Hey ladies. All right, so I do a deep litter system a lot of people do there is uh, depending on where you are in, in the run right now there's up to 15 inches deep of this uh, wood chips and chicken residue is if you will and then over time of course that just kind of compacts down more and more and more and at the end of the year I back a pickup up right here open the door and we rake all this out and fork it up into the pickup and take it to a friend's house that has a very large garden and they turn that into the soil and let it rot over the winter so it's ready for spring. Um, not every year. You know, that's a lot of, this is a lot of phosphorus and a lot of nitrogen. So I don't garden much. I, I run onion beds, so I don't really need much fertilizer, but this works out for them. Adds a lot of organic matter to their um, garden. 
but it doesn't smell like anything out here right now. And we have several birds out here living, and you know how a chicken's coop usually smells. This one has no smell whatsoever because of this. It's just com continually drying all their matter, and they're scratching in it and rolling in it and you know moving it about and doing what they do. Uh, so it's a it's a great way to uh, it's a great way to run a run a coop for sure. I prefer this greatly over like a hard surface concrete floor or something like that. I have a little feed scoop turned upside down here filled with oyster shell and and grit things like that. Here's their hanging feeder and their water. And then here's the electric outlet I went ahead and installed. It's an exterior outlet. I have the whole place is powered with light, uh, but I have an outlet out here so that I can take this uh, heater and plug it in during the winter and drop it into their water bucket and it never freezes. Um, that works out really, really well. And then I have a brush up here because when I bring a three gallon bucket of water in to wash this out, it's great to have a, a brush real handy. Let's walk around uh, the front and I'll show you the, the hen house part. I can't fit through that. <laughs> All right. This is that door we got at Habitat for Humanity. I just painted it brown and, and kind of gave it a, an arts and craftsy look and covered the back with hardware cloth. Thought it looked a little better. <clears throat> All right, this is the hen house itself. We have two broody cochins, as they always are. This is my nest boxes. There's four of them, which is plenty. They all use the same dang one anyway. Look under here. Yeah, so they've all been using this one today. I have a roost built here. I did build this roost to where it lifts up. And you can use that little chain right there to hook it. Um, hook it to the ceiling or to the wall whenever you want to clean out down here or do whatever. I have uh, an extra hanging feeder and an extra water in here right now because I have chicks that I incubated. There's 21 babies here now. Just released them into here. So, you know, they're doing their thing. I have an outlet up here and I have a plug-in light. This plug-in light is for the winter months and I have it on one of these lamp timers. You can get it at Lowe's or whatever. And I have this come on every morning at 4 in the morning and stay on until about 7. And that way the chickens get enough daylight um, to where they stay you know, actively laying eggs. You know, everyone knows they're photosensitive and they need, you know, 11 or 12 hours of daylight before they'll lay real, real consistently. So I just keep that light coming on at 4 a.m. for the winter and fall months. And then in the summer like this, it's not a problem. I can turn it off. Here's all the babies. So that's pretty much my layout. I'll show you how the uh, egg box works from the outside. The idea in the beginning was that I'm going to have to come into the coop to get the eggs every time because you know, your feet get nasty if it's been raining and, you know, this, that, and the other. But I usually go just go inside. But this is the way I did the outside. <clears throat> I, built the, I built this as a cabinet up in my shop and cut a hole in this siding. This is the same siding, the fence siding I used everywhere around it. Just lap siding. It's just fence pickets. Um, but I built this, and this is the nest box that we just saw from the inside, and it sticks out like this. So you can open this little gat, this little latch, it's a raccoon proof, <laughs> and lift it up, and you can collect eggs from out here if you like. This is my broody little coaching. <laughs> She's very tame. Put your tail back in. All right. There we go. And that's it. That's pretty much my, my hen house. Working on a little run back here in the woods right now. Haven't finished it yet. I've got the fence going up around here, so they'll have a little woodsy hangout. They will eat every single thing you see here. This will be pure dirt in about a month once I let them out here. <laughs> but it'll be a nice place for them to, uh, you know, go during the day to get some shade. And uh, the hawks and stuff won't be able to get to them down in here. Hopefully. So... That's my chicken coop. Um, that's my hen house. That's how I run it. I've had other hen houses in the past. You know, you learn a, th a thing or two every time you build one. Every time you do anything with animals, you learn a thing or two. And the most important part about this one, for me, was that metal at the bottom that goes 12 inches underground all the way around. So I set the main uprights here 
I set all those in concrete and then I dug a trench all the way around it a foot deep and then I installed my metal. That way it was subterranean and uh, raccoons and stuff like that aren't tempted to dig under. So, hope you like it. Thank you.